If you thought Tuesday was fun, boy, do we have more in store. It's part two of Clacia's Men. I'm Juliette Littman, and now let's batch. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other, well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliette Littman. I am joined today, as I was previously this week, by my colleague and Bachelor Nation citizen, co-citizen, Amelia Wedemeyer. Hi, Amelia. Welcome Hi. back. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here again. Wonderful to see you. Um, we left off with Jeremy. We'll be picking up with Joe. I'm really excited. Joe. I think before we do that, I'd like to follow up on a few things that we discussed earlier, both last week and with Liz and a few days ago with you. Sure. I would like to begin by discussing Nemecolon, which is where Matt James is currently, <laughs> Matt James 919, his full name, let's <laughs> use it, where he is currently filming The Bachelor. And he might he might still be quarantining. I'm not sure. I don't know their COVID protocols. He's been there about a week. And last week I fucked up. I hadn't done any research on Nemecolon, and that's like really unacceptable. So I just want to apologize again. So I'm sorry. Hey, we all make mistakes. Slash, <laughs> I don't think it's that big of a deal. But thanks, that's just I, me. thanks, Amelia. Well, here's what some people are saying. Um, thank you to many people who pointed out that they went there on JoJo season. I have oh. to say, while I like JoJo and Jordan, that season sucked, and I don't really remember it. It was super boring because from the beginning, she was obviously going to pick Jordan and Robbie blows he sucked at the time (laughs) and he continues to suck now he really does it's not been a good look for the rest of time being for Robbie so Robbie went went on to appear on one episode of Vanderpump Rules on a real (laughs) stage date with Sheena and then became a season a season regular on Siesta Key I mean that's wild it's wild that's like that's like a downward trajectory a slight do do you think going from the bachelor to Vanderpump is a step up or a step down Okay, here's the thing. I I love Bravo reality shows, and I think Vanderpump is the only show that I really haven't seen, and I've heard that I would love it, so I really should get into it. Yeah, it's and, on Hulu. Watch it. I know, but I will say there's some prestige about being on network TV reality yeah. versus cable. And, and I love Bravo, and I say that as a huge Bravo fan. I agree with that. There's so much Bravo drama right now. It's like kind of insane. I'm I, so I, glad Teddy Mellencamp, I hate her Teddy. ass has been fired. Thank I've God. Al- I've always hated Teddy. However, I also, I have a problem with like so many things happening in this kind of Bravo uh, landscape right now. Like I don't, I don't like these Instagram accounts. They're just like taking Teddy down though. I don't like Teddy either, but like, let's be real. Let's just be honest about like why we don't like Teddy. And, and I do think her diet system is probably fucked up, but like, I don't know. Totally. I don't like I don't like these anonymous Instagram accounts that are just like spreading information that like is could not because like no way of knowing if it's true. It's just like someone said it. You know what I mean? True. So That's true. I, I have a problem with that, but I've also always hated Teddy. Um, yeah, I, let's hate her because she's boring and sh- she's only here because her dad is famous. Sorry. And also, she just like clearly have like control issues. Like, I don't understand. I don't I've never liked her. And she, her relationship fact, with Kyle. Fake. Horrible. Horrible. It's oh my God. So fake. That's another thing. If if the rumors about Kyle Mauricio's being on the rocks were true, Ooh. which I don't I don't believe. I okay. don't believe them. But like mm-hmm. I would probably just have to like go into hibernation. I would be devastated. <laughs> I, I like Kyle really? Mauricio is a fact of my life that I'm not willing to give up. It wow. would be so upsetting. I think 
together and with that show and with all the Bravo stuff, they just are better. It's a better brand for them. So it would be actually stupid if they broke up. 100%. I mean, the agency has taken off since we has been really on that has. show. So, I mean, how are they going to maintain that? And Sino Mansion, if they're off, whatever. We were off on a tangent here. Um, anyway, Nema Collins, where they are. I tried to see if I could book a room in Nema Collins wow. in October. I cannot. I think that The Bachelor has bought it out, which leads me to believe they won't be traveling because mm. that would be like, a, it's a few, it was like a few weeks from now. Maybe they'll travel. I highly doubt it. I mean, COVID's like kind of on the on the way back in. It's not on the way back out. <laughs> right. It's, it's a rising tide, unfortunately. Um, it's not a, not a laughing matter. So I don't think they're traveling, but I couldn't, I couldn't make any reservations. So I can't just mm-hmm. like go and try to like creep on Matt James, which is definitely too bad. Dang. Um, it seems fun. It's, you know, it's like kind of central ish Pennsylvania. So I think many different parts of Pennsylvania feel like they have, um, like a connection to it. It's in Farmington, PA, very high score on TripAdvisor. It has mm. over 3,000 reviews and four and a half stars. So that means like really good reviews because it's hard to do that that many people weighing in, you know? That's um, true. It also has like a lot of different buildings on the property and a golf course. There's a lot of land for them to shoot over. Mm. And there's like one big building and then a lot of villas and private homes. So there's a lot, there does seem to be a lot of options here. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what scenic Pennsylvania has to offer. Sure. I, you know, I don't really care that much, but I support <laughs> you in the show. So yeah, excited for that. <laughs> oh, Amelia. Um, they also have something called what they call disc golf. They have like a, a whole oh, page no. of experiences. First of all, we all know it's called Frisbee golf. It's froth. <laughs> I mean, anyone who's ever spent any time around like a, a Dave Matthews band loving bro is familiar with with this phenomenon. <laughs> I heard Dave Matthews on the radio, by the way, the other day. They, they got some hits. Yeah, I kind of thought all their music sounded the same. But of that same sounding music, I, you know, enjoy it. It's like, yeah. Oh, cool. I mean, okay. shout out to Lady Bird, which really brought back Dave, Dave Matthews. <laughs> um, but they also just have like so much you can do. Like they have bowling. They have tennis. Like oh. I, now I get it. They have zip lining. I understand why they're going there. There's a, there's a lot to do. Yeah. Zip so, lining would be fun. Super fun. I, I know. I love a, I love a, a, a passive thrill like that. Like all you, <laughs> it's not like a ropes course or like climbing wall, which is really hard. I have, a lot, I have a lot of trauma from like ropes courses as a child. Um, <laughs> very difficult. I just feel like extremely difficult, difficult. underrated. Um, it just seems like there's a lot to do. So, you know, Nema Colin, I'm sorry I didn't research you. I feel bad about it. Now, more important topic that we uh, broached the other day that I'd like to come back to. As we noted, as we went through the bios, many a alleged professional athlete in this, right. this group. So we had Blake who um, played baseball. Thank you, Amelia, for doing some research. I, I really appreciate it. What, why don't you tell no us what you found? Blake, let's just say he was signed by the Nationals and he never never called up. I kind of like don't care. I feel like football is the official sport of the Bachelor and all associated franchises. That so let's is get true. into the three dudes who allegedly played in the NFL. Dale, Easy, Dale. and Jason, all of whom we liked. Let's start. Like, what'd, right. you, what'd you learn? <laughs> Well, uh, this is according to his Wikipedia, but Dale, he went undrafted in 2012, but he was signed by the Green Bay Packers, which is a, you know, storied team title sure. town. Of course. You know, love that. Been to that stadium. It's literally, have? Ju- I have, cause I, I went to school in Wisconsin and then, um, I like lived there for a little bit from like my first job and it's literally the town. It's lovely scenic, but it is just the stadium mm-hmm. Lambeau, a uh, Barnes and Noble. Okay. And a home reading. Depot. Okay. That's well, it. I, I, that's not enough to sustain me. However, <laughs> I, I do love reading and I like a Home Depot. I've only really been to them like sure. two times. I like oh. the idea of Home Depot. The idea. Yeah. Well, you know, it smells nice in there because it's like wood. The wood. Yeah. 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 But no, it's a lovely, it's a lovely looking town. Okay. Great. Um, so he, Undrafted and then signed, I think is cool. But then you noted that it seems like he really was just on the practice squad, which is like, yeah, that's Colton territory. This is that's like it's Colton territory. And I don't I want them to be more upfront about this because also like someone like Clay Harbor, he was actually in the NFL. There it, are pictures of him with his stuff on. Yes, and it's yes. like, OK, you were in the NFL. Thank you. I think that Clay is like kind of the only true bona fide athlete, professional athlete of the show. 
that's so true. And you're so right. They do fake you out. This reminds me and not to like delve into my personal history, but I played <laughs> traveling soccer and it wasn't like the best team. It was like this C league team and we won state, but it's like, I don't brag about it because it was C league. <laughs> you know, this is what we're dealing with here. I, I'm just being honest. And that's what I want the bachelor people to be honest. With, yeah, with the, you know, I agree. Prestige. So easy, easy was the same practice squads right. for Houston and Miami. Not exactly. that exciting. Not, Not exciting at all. But then Jason, oh, what's no. the deal with Jason? Well, according to Wikipedia, again, upon entering the NFL, he received the second lowest Wonderlic score in NFL history. <laughs> he did manage to sign with Tampa Bay, but um, <laughs> that's really rough. That's just that's not the distinction you want. You're <laughs> really not. Poor Jason. You know, he, uh, I, I hope he can overcome this some, somehow in his life. He seemed like a really nice guy. We decided we'd like Jason for three dates and out. It's like three downs and out, you know? Right. Exactly. So. He's got a Seth Rogen laugh, which I love. Um, And yeah, he looks like a nice person. Jason, don't play football. Move on. Well, he has <laughs> moved on, so it's good. He, he probably That's recognized true. that he wasn't good enough and uh, he, he moved on. All right. Shall we move on? Should we get into these this last batch of dudes? Yeah, I, I'm so excited. Okay. We'll do a little bit more Bachelor news at the end. But onward, we have a truly exciting, just kind of like top level l- amount of information here. This reminds me, did mm-hmm. you happen to watch uh, Indian Matchmaking on Netflix? No, but I heard it's what great. What are you doing? It was fantastic. I'm sorry. It was great. So okay. they, have, they have something on that. I guess this is common in Indian culture. It's not just on Indian matchmaking. Matchmakers have like sheets for different perspective daters and it's called their bio data. And I would say Joe, mm. oh. who's our next guy, has great bio data. Joe, 36, anesthesiologist from New York City. And wow. I just love it. Um, you know, they wrote his bio to be very doctor focused, which I'm not mm. sure I feel great about. But like, <laughs> how are you not rooting for Joe? Here's what we have. Here's what we learned. After spending most of 2020 fighting coronavirus on the front lines in New York City, Joe, an accomplished anesthesiologist and a COVID-19 survivor, is Whoa! not wasting time. I, Joe, amazing. And also like just bringing this level of currency, literally, to the show that oh my I'm God. really excited about. I mean, that's amazing. And he's, I mean, he really knows about precious time. Yes, so this he is, does. I, I, wow. I just want to venture to say I'm happy for Joe if he wanted to go on The Bachelorette that he's f- found his way to the show. Yes. However, I feel he could do better. I don't know when he <laughs> needs this Bachelorette. No, no shots at Claire or Tasha, And like, I'm a Bachelor yeah. correspondent. So like, who am I to say? But I just, <laughs> I just feel like with this bio data, Joe could be aiming higher, you know? So- Truly. And also it's like this bachelor thing is like, it's on the lower end of like all the cool stuff you've done in the last like five years. 100%. So here's more about Joe, dude. And this is just, such a, this is like a rom-com waiting to happen. Joe should be starring in like <laughs> his own, his own rom-com vehicle directed by Judd Apatow, not in The Bachelorette. Due to his busy work schedule, Joe primarily meets women on dating apps, but says he hasn't had much luck because women on apps are always wondering if there is someone better out there. I don't wow. know if that's true. I know of several at marriages, but okay. Admittedly, the world of online dating has not done much to boost Joe's confidence, which is crazy considering he was once voted top 20 most eligible doctors and medical professionals in New York City. In all of New York City? Yes, in the great <sighs> city. The greatest city in the world, says Hamilton. I mean... I love New York. I really do love New York. I do too. It's my hometown. <laughs> it's a great, great place. I dearly hope it comes back to what it was before Me COVID. Too. I bet Joe agrees. And I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's I, a, that's like a bigger title to your, yeah, to your name than being on The Bachelor. I mean, that's huge. That's really cool. He's a frontline worker who oh was voted one of the most eligible <laughs> bachelor, uh, eligible doctors and medical professionals in New York City. There's a fucking lot of doctors in New York City. So like, <laughs> yes. it's really impressive. I mean, I don't, I don't know what he's doing, but I can't wait to find out more about Joe. I'm all in on Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that he will use this as a stepping stone, you know, like so many of these guys will. I hope this will increase the followers, you know? I agree. Two other facts about Joe that I, that I think are fantastic. Joe's favorite childhood game is Scrabble. <laughs> Love it. I feel like we're often in like a more of a shoots and ladders vibe here. So this is wow. really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> 
And Joe says the best trip he ever took was a 10 week solo trip to Central America. I love Whoa. a man who can spend time by himself. You know, that's fantastic. That's pretty cool. That's like a one. Have you, there's this one MasterCard commercial that is just like an all time MasterCard commercial. And it's like this guy and he's like traveling through like Europe and it's like Tim finding himself priceless. And it's like, yeah, now I want to do that. That's why I see Joe doing that in South America. Joe, I can't wait to meet you. Um, we're moving on to Jordan C., who's 26, a software account executive, also from New York City. A lot of New York guys. Love that. I'm interested in this, because uh, there's always these these casting trends, right? Like, we've been through Denver. We've been through Nashville. But mm. Way back when, it was a Chicago show. A lot of <laughs> yeah. LA. Yeah, the, the Chris Bukowski era. Chris Bukowski was oh like... Oh, my God. Yeah, he was kind of like the end of the Chicago craze. But Chicago, <laughs> when Jacoby and I used to do The Right Reasons at Grantland, Chicago was like ground zero for Bachelor life. Like, after the show, you wanted to be in Chicago. I mean, obviously, it's moved to L.A. in this new this new environment of social media, but like, sure. It used to, there's always a city where, where it's, it's popping. And we've been through Denver. We've been through Nashville. We've been (laughs) Chicago, obviously LA. And I feel like they had some good luck with Tyler and Matt James 919. And they're all about New York now. There's something about New York. It's like classier. It's, I don't know. There's something that's more streamlined about it. The guys are probably smarter if we're being honest. You know, I'm not going to weigh in. I'm biased as a New Yorker. (laughs) However, I, I will say, when someone moves to LA, you're, I mean, like you and I both did this as did Erica, who's working on our show right now. So like really no shots, but when people move to LA, it's like, did you move here to be famous? Like, it's just <laughs> and it's so much less of a question with New York. It's like, did you that's move to true. New York to be rich? Like that's kind of, it's like, did you move here for finance versus did you move here to like get at spawn con? You know, it's just, it's just <laughs> a different scene. And it's a hundred percent is, and I'm digging the New York scene. Honestly, <laughs> I'm just, I love when we evolve into a new phase of the show. So it's exciting. I'm just more excited about the evolution than anything else. Anyway, you know I'm, I'm not excited about Jordan though, is that what? he decided to rock the glasses. Look, it's funny. You say that his bio says anyone who says glasses aren't sexy clearly oh. hasn't met Jordan C and clearly that's correct. You have not met Jordan C. Oh, well, I will say this as a glasses wearer, I'm wearing contacts Same. right now. Same. Uh, there you go. But here's the thing. The glasses, you're making everyone's life a little harder, especially if you're going to be on TV or on camera. The lighting. It makes the lighting, the glare. Yeah. You're making it harder for everyone. And it's like, I hate putting people in that position. And it seems like he's willing to do that. And that's kind of rude and selfish. Jor- <laughs> Ouch. Sorry. Jordan, in fact, has a, a light reflection, some glare in this photo. Uh, see? So that, there you go. There you go. Um, would you would you get uh, what's that surgery called for your eyes? When LASIK. You can, LASIK. Yes. Would you get LASIK? Oh, man. Well, if I I guess if I had the money to sure. But glass. I mean, I here's the thing. I enjoy wearing like glasses like at night. They're kind of fun. And I don't know. There's something about wearing glasses. You could just throw them on and then throw them off and then you can take a nap. Whereas, I, you know, when I'm it, wearing yeah. contacts and just or when I didn't have to wear contacts, when my eyesight was actually good, it was like you're on all the time. I don't know. Maybe I, that's just me. I love wearing glasses. I would never give it up. I don't know that I'd be permanent glasses wearer, but I'm probably like 65, 35 mm. contacts to glasses. But I love I love my glasses so much. And like I just think that like they just, you know, it's an it's another piece of fashion. It's not, that's it's not true. always what you're wearing on your body. It's also what you're wearing on your face. So I I love glasses. I also love a man in glasses. I just think it's a great look. I remember when I was a kid and Nick Carter debuted some glasses <laughs> when he was in the Backstreet Boys. I remember distinctly, I had a picture of him on my bedroom door when I was 12. Um, and I loved it. And ever since, it's been a great look. That's amazing. That's amazing. Let's talk more about Jordan. Mm. Um, some uh, weird facts about Jordan. I will say he had some tragedy in his life and I, that probably has given him a lot of strength. His father passed away, which I'm very sorry about. Mm-hmm. Um, he said that he's looking for someone who will spend hours with him on the couch watching Jim Carrey movies. Gotta wonder, is he a mask sure. guy? Is he an Eternal Sunshine guy? Or is it a Ooh. Truman Show kind of vibe? Like, which Jim Carrey movies? All of them? I just, I need to know. Oh, wow. That's a great question. I don't know. Jim Carrey contains multitudes. I have to say, I love Jim Carrey. Just a fantastic actor. No, and also great artist. Yeah, 100%. Love his artwork. <laughs> he was just a, he's an icon. Um, This is weird. Jordan C. dreams of having a dog named Maverick. I'm like, okay, I dream bigger. What's so hard about that? Get a dog named Maverick. Adopt, don't shop. Yeah. 
you know, just don't listen to Dory adopt, don't shop. Um, <laughs> even if you offered him a million dollars, Jordan C would not go swimming with sharks. Never going to happen. Jordan C would love to learn how to salsa dance. I'm just a little worried that he's very risk adverse and has no interest in like taking a big swing other than going on the show. So Jordan C, I don't know about you. I don't know either. And Chris during the live stream mentioned that he is unbelievably mature, which to me translates really? as extremely boring. Yeah, super boring. 100%. You know? But I guess it's what happened when your father dies and you have to be the man of the house. Oh my God. Well, that's dark. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, you're I right. I think that is the case. But, you know, that, that sounds like a good boyfriend with boring TV. So Jordan C, I don't know how much we're going to be seeing you. <laughs> Next, Jordan M. He's 30, cybersecurity mm. engineer. Great cool. career. I feel like there's a lot of career prospects with cybersecurity and being an engineer. So, like, good life choices. He's from Santa Monica, California. Standing at a towering six feet and eight inches, Jordan wow. M.'s good looks are hard to miss. I, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of studies about tall guys and how like income is proportional to height for men. Oh, I feel like that's also true of The Bachelor where like just tall guys go further. So I feel like that's Jordan, true. He's going to be sticking around for a while. Yeah. And, you know, it was funny because like the, Chris was doing the live stream and they had mm-hmm. like the little gif or like photos of them where they sure. moved. And his was like, he's so tall that they made a little tall joke that they cropped his face out of it. But then they're like, oh, let's show you his actual body. And then also Chris was like, I think he is like the tallest guy in the history of the show. And he also competes in computer hacking competitions. Yes. He says he loves writing poetry and competing in hacking competitions. <laughs> That's really cool. It is really cool. Jordan M. This is dope. I I'm I like him a lot. Jordan M. I just feel like good vibes. I mean... Mm-hmm. I hope that Clarita should pick him. He seems smart. Jordan M knows what he wants and says he's single because he hasn't met a woman with enough depth. I'm not sure he's going to find that in Bachelor Nation, but <laughs> hey, he might. No Never shots know. once again. It's just not really rewarded in this setting, you know. He says he's very attracted to Claire and is excited to date someone who is mature and knows exactly what they want. That's their way of saying he's fine with her age. His only knock, Jordan M admits that he can be a little shy at first, but once his guard's down, his game is on. I, it, it's game on. I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in on this guy. It gets better. Jordan M idolizes Barack Obama. Jordan M's favorite Sunday activity is cleaning. Would love to have that around the house. Jordan's, yeah. Jordan M's dream is to own a classic car restoration shop. I feel like he's the second guy. He is the second guy who like has like some exotic car dream. Right. An exotic car fetish. Yeah. Men in cars. Like, what is it? I don't get it because I, I don't do either. not care about I, my I car. I don't either. Like, I who cares? I'm just like, this is a, literally it's literally a conveyance. But um, Jordan M, dare I say Jordan M has the most real life dating potential of any man we've come across yet in this cast? I think so. I think so. He seems just like a just a guy, like a cool guy that you I would want to be friends with. Honestly. Totally. Like hack my computer. Well, don't hack my computer, but like help me hack other people's computers and stuff. Come up with some cool idea, man. And <laughs> like, you know, start a tech startup or something like that. Ooh, an app maybe? Yeah, he's a cybersecurity engineer. Just make something. Let's build Jordan M. <laughs> I'm into it. I'm really into it. I also just, you know, I really hope that he is not besieged day in, day out by people commenting on his height. Like I know Ugh. that happens to tall, tall men and yeah. obviously women, but more tall men. And it's just like random people will come up to you and like comment on your height. And like, that's fucked up. It is fucked up. It's just like any feature that you don't control. It's like if someone so came up true. to you and like commented on like, the size of your nose, like the shape of your nose, you'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? So why are you just commenting on someone's height? Maybe they feel awkward about it. This is a, this is a problem that I have with society. And I say that as someone who definitely is like into tall men. So whatever. No. Well, and you know, it's coming because they already started out with a height joke with the, you know, it's just like, okay. And like, don't ask him if you played basketball. It's not a requirement (laughs) to play basketball if you're tall. (laughs) That's so true. Okay. Aww. Let's move on. Jordan M, we've got our eye on you. We'd like you. Next, we have Kenny. Oh my God. <laughs> Kenny, he's 39. He's a boy band manager from Chicago, Illinois. I, I mean, I didn't even know un- that was still a thing. Unbelievable. There's so many puns about in sync in this man's bio. <laughs> This handsome man about town is ready to say bye, bye, bye to the single life. Oh Kenny God. is a talent buyer in Chicago where he creates and manages boy band cover bands. Oh, he's the oh. first one to admit that in the past he's put his career before relationships. 
blah, blah, blah. Kenny is tired of having no strings attached. Okay. <laughs> One way to Kenny's heart is through music. Um, he's waited this long to find the right woman and he isn't about to just settle down for anyone. Quote this, I promise you. First of wow. all, I have, a, I have a lot to say. A lot. <laughs> Number Please. one, clearly a cast off from Listen to Your Heart. He was supposed to go on that show and didn't make oh it. Oh my reason. God. Do you think they upgraded him or downgraded him? I think upgrade. This is an upgrade. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. But this is, that's what they probably were planning <laughs> with this guy, right? Like that's how he came through as like a, he could, he could have been like Matt with, instead of Matt and Rudy could have been Kenny oh, and Rudy. Kenny and Rudy. Yeah. They were probably, well, that's interesting. And the thing is, I don't, I don't. Like, I'm like, oh, 39. I don't think 39 is that old. But no. there were a lot of young people on that show specifically. That Yeah, what, what was that? The the first girl's name who went on the two oh. dates. Trevor oh. and... Oh, Jamie. Jamie. She was 21. She can't date Kenny. Exactly. See, and that's not... It's he not has happening. double the amount of life experience. I mean, come on. <laughs> exactly. I just... Okay. Kenny is my enemy, first of all. Whoa! There's really? A lo- yes. First of all. I'm a diehard Backstreet Boys fan. Yes, I like an NSYNC mm. song. Yes, they're very catchy tunes. We sure. can all agree Justin Timberlake is the most successful and famous person from this era. Fine, I accept it. He but also people seems like hate him now. Yes, yeah. I think it seems like Backlash. he sucks. And he uh, screwed over Janet Jackson and he screwed, yes. screwed over his co-worker or his co-star. I believe her name was Alicia. Like, just bad news. Fine. But I accept that he's the most famous, whatever. The Backstreet Boys are so superior to NSYNC. It does not even, it's not even a competition. If you go in their dis- discography, their music track for track across all albums, so much better. Plus they did it first. Plus they're still together. They like, uh, the Backstreet Boys, show them what you're made of documentary is one of my favorite films of all time. Ooh. And I don't appreciate all of these NSYNC puns. Like just where's the Backstreet Boys <laughs> love? Where? I don't, is there some kind of deal going on with like a Backstreet or are we in an NSYNC thing, an ABC? No, I don't know. the Backstreet Boys were on the freaking Bachelor. They were on next season. Oh my God. Okay. Well. Oh right. With uh, he had the date with Danielle. D'Lo. Yes. Yes. She won. Yes. 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 I yes, was yes. very jealous. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I I love them. If you go to my Instagram, you'll see a video um of me standing next to Nick, Nick Carter. My second Nick Carter reference of the episode. <laughs> I'm standing next to him, and I was stone cold sober. This is about two years ago. Um, I just fell down. I was just so excited that I just fell down. <laughs> I love that. Why not? I, I get it. I understand. Thank you. Are you. Where do you stand on NSYNC versus Backstreet Boys? Well, it's hard. Well, see, because I, I don't know. I like, oh, this is embarrassing, but like one of my first concerts was mm-hmm. NSYNC. I was invited though. And it was like box seats. What's so, embarrassing like, about that? Well, no, it's just like, I don't know. It was like NSYNC, but I my, know, it was my like, first concert was 98 degrees. Nothing embarrassing. Are you sure? No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I am not embarrassed. I'm a part of history. Jessica Simpson opened for them. And that's when oh, her and Nick Lachey. That's pretty cool. That's met. pretty cool. Yeah, that was the tour in which they met and they got married. And that spawned an incredible reality TV show, <laughs> Newly Wed, Sick and Jessica. So no, I'm not that's, embarrassed. That's true. No, it was good. It was um during their pop tour. And it yes. was, you know, so during I like them for that. Yeah, exactly. It's great tunes. Know. But like, I'm sorry, the Backstreet Boys are better. He obviously doesn't see that. So Kenny, <laughs> whatever. Sorry, Next. Kenny. Let's move on to his bullet points. They're like ridiculous. Kenny and his dad work out together every day. What? Are you going to the NBA? Like, are you, are you Dell and Steph Curry? Like what is going on? Oh, I kind of like that though. It's like, you know, family bonding. All right. No, I don't know. Whatever. I bond my mom from watching TV and like my dad and I like me too. Yeah. Like, do we need to work out together? No. (laughs) Next. This one is truly appalling. Agreed. Kenny hates cheese. What Are you fucking fuck? kidding me? <laughs> Kenny? I'm on a cheese exclusive diet, basically. Quarantine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's not to love about cheese, honestly? I, I don't know. I, it's I, rude. It's, it's, people who are anti-cheese, I don't get. Next, <laughs> Kenny says the best time of the week for a date is Sunday morning over coffee. I agree. Sunday mornings with coffee are great. But like as a date time, I don't think so. That's me time. Yes, thank you. Exactly. Maybe yeah, if, you're, I don't, if you're in a relationship, you could have like coinciding me time, but like a date, I don't think so. I yeah. I kind of like watching the sunrise by myself and just like <laughs> contemplating life. Yeah. I don't need someone else we don't need Kenny. chiming in. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> lastly, I mean, Kenny wants to own his dive bar on the beach one day. If that okay. is true, why is he living in Chicago? Immediately move to Florida. 
Oh, wow. Or even, you know, maybe like Manhattan Beach or something. No, there's not a lot of no. bars there. Okay. There aren't. There's like the Strand and then it's like a lot of residential and it's the zoning, I think, is much stricter. I learned oh. from Siesta Key. There's a lot of bars <laughs> on uh, on the beach in Florida. Well, there you go. I mean, and also, but I will say this about he seems very he's even though he's 39, he seems very young. And Chris said on the live stream, he comes off as very young, but he also said my boy, Kenny. So he oh gave him God. that shout out. So that's a bad endorsement. If Chris <laughs> Harrison is saying you seem young, <laughs> that's not good. It's not good. And then also he he alludes to maybe some nudity in Kenny's what? future. Yes, because he said, I saw a lot of Kenny. We all saw a lot of Kenny. He has no tan lines anywhere at oh all. Oh, my God. So, so. he went to self-tanning beforehand. Okay. <laughs> that's just, honestly, that's just a good strategy. That's like what you should do before going on the show. That's yeah, fine. I guess, you know, get yourself groomed, whatever, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um. All right, let's move on. Mike, 38, digital media advisor from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Love the Canadians, just pro-Canadian. I'm not going to read Mike's bio because it's incredibly boring. Like, literally, there's, <laughs> there's nothing to call out. However, you did some research on Mike. What did you learn? Yes, yeah, so... um. Uh, part, part of the bio did say that he went viral. So, of course, I had to Google Hoda Kotb, Today Show, ca- Canadian man. And it was this <laughs> act, very delightful video of uh, Mike at the women's gold medal hockey uh, competition game, whatever. Um, sorry, I'm not very good with the terms. Um, no problem. From Pyeongchang, the Winter Olympics. And he was like, acting all sullen and sad on uh, this video. And then in the background was like uh, Hoda and like Al. And they were like, woo, yeah, USA, USA, because the USA won. USA, USA. Yeah. It was very funny. And then he went on the Today Show and he like kind of recreated the video. And then he talked to the Today Show hosts and they had nothing but so just they bombarded him with compliments. They were like, you are so nice. That's so you were lovely. so generous to us. You're so polite. You're such a good guy, Mike. We love you. Like, uh, he, it was amazing. That sounds lovely. He yeah. just sounds like a nice regular guy. Like, I feel like he could be one of our coworkers because here are some other facts about him. Mike is a proud lifelong member of the Shania Twain fan club. <laughs> Very popular internet take, but isn't really mainstream though, you know, but like Shania's <gasps> big on the internet streets. That's funny. Yeah. Do you like me, Shania? I mean, I, uh, well, I grew up loving her music. My mom would play it in the car when she like drove us places. Um, to sea level soccer. Sea level C, exactly. Um, but I, uh, her politics, I mean, I don't mean yeah. to be political, but her politics yeah. are kind of sure. shitty. And, and honestly, she hasn't really put out any bangers lately. No. And I would like to see, hear more bangers from her. Sorry. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Nonetheless, popular internet take. Next, Mike refuses to acknowledge that season eight of Game of Thrones ever aired. <laughs> Again, popular internet take. Yeah, this guy very is very popular. online. <laughs> and lastly, this is just like the, a weird kind of thing. If Mike could live in any time period, he would live during the Jurassic year so he could roam through life with the dinosaurs. This guy loves an adventure. Bad, yes, great point. Bad pick, but that's true. Loves an adventure. And he's probably one of those people who would be like, well, they mostly ate plants anyway. They're herbivores. So, <laughs> so he's like, okay. And he's like, you he bark. He'd well actually you on dinosaurs. Oh my God. Well, and also in the Olympic video, he was saying that him and his friend went to the Brazil Olympics too to cheer on Canada. So he loves traveling and cheering on his country. which Lo- is that's, that's beautiful. Delightful, yeah. Mike, Mike is just a, a cool internet guy. Spends a lot of time online, shares a lot of opinions with many people on Twitter. But that kind of like is a positive, even though I'm generally anti-social media, but like that's positive, you know? Uh, agreed, agreed. All right, let's move on. Paige, 37, a chef from Austin, Texas. Mm. Paige is a well-known and well-respected chef in the Austin area. Interesting. I'm going to need to look in on that. I feel like they they take a lot of liberties. He has been <laughs> in a few serious relationships and he says he now understands the importance of a work life balance. Um, mm. OK, sure. I feel like it's a, cl- a classic like chef thing to say, like just gave it all for the last <laughs> 10 years. Now I got to move on. Oh my God. Well, it's also hard to separate work from your personal life if you're a chef. Yeah, right? it's true. You know, it's true. I don't know. Um, divorced, he wants a strong, independent woman who will be a loving stepmom and will love his little boy like her own. Aww. Love his little boy like her own. I want to note, 
I don't know if he's divorced. I was assuming he just is a father, which is, you know, notable on this show. He kind of looks like Michael Voltaggio to me a little bit. <laughs> Fellow chef. Um, anyway, <laughs> Paige cannot relate to people who love football. Interesting. Wow. I like it. So I hope that he gets into fights with his, his fellow cast members. Ooh. <laughs> I would love to see that. Paige was featured in Food and Wine magazine as one of the best new chefs of the year, which is pretty cool. That was in 2016. Oh, that is actually really cool. Yeah. That's a big publication. Big time. And his favorite foods are pizza and caviar, but not at the same time. He seems like a cool guy. Not a lot of sub- substance here, ironically, considering he makes substance, but <laughs> whatever. We'll go with it. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. Well, Chris had to say this. He said, this dude is a chef. And he actually acknowledged that. He's like, you know, we've had chefs on in the past, but this guy is legit. So it seems like he is a legitimate chef. Okay. We're, I, I'm Paige. into it. That's great. Love it. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other, well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, It means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. All right, let's move on. Riley, he's 30. He's an attorney and he's from Long Island City in New York. You know, we get a lot of female lawyers. And by a lot, I mean a few. Kelly, Rachel, not a lot of men. I'm excited about it. Love it. It should be good. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, Also, another New Yorker, which is just, you know, notable. They're, They're really leading it leaning into this. He's another guy who's just been working too hard. And now he's ready to find a woman. I mean, he'd rather check out a new restaurant or spend a day at the ballpark enjoying the game over beer and hot dogs. Hmm. But he does not want to go to a museum with you. That's tough. Wow. Why? I, I love a museum date. They did that on no, next season. And like museums are fun. Also in real life. Yeah. I mean, they're really are, cool. Also, they're really big. They kind of um they accommodate mm. both wandering. <laughs> and choosing a specific destination. So it's kind of like you get a two in one. Like you can like two in one. You go to like a specific place and you can just wander after and be like, oh, let's check out this other gallery. Or like, oh, let's get it go to the cafe. I love totally. a museum gift store and a museum cafe. Yes. And you know, actually, now that's it, especially if you're in New York and I I recently went to New York with my parents parents last year and we went to several museums and it Wonderful. was so much fun. We had a I great know. time. I just went to the Met. I wore a mask and it was phenomenal. I loved it. Oh my God. The, especially when they have that, the whole fun Met. We went to yeah. the camp exhibit oh, and cool. it was the amazing. Institute. Yes. That's awesome. Oh my God. It was so cool. I love it. So. The Met is probably my favorite place in the world. Um, it's beautiful. I, it, that's actually rude. Uh, Riley, you know, I liked you, <laughs> but now I really take that back. Because Riley, we're out. We're out what? on you. We, oh we've got to move on from you. Here's a positive. He knows all the lyrics to call me maybe. Oh, but so does everyone. It's true. I mean, it's a really yeah. good song. It's very, it's it's a it's an all time classic. It the really one, is. The one thing that really makes Riley mad is when the University of Michigan loses to Ohio State. So I guess he went to Michigan because otherwise he wouldn't have that opinion. <laughs> and his favorite type of dance is slow dancing. I mean, that's not that's not a dance. Yeah, that's just like dry humping. Yeah, 
<laughs> also, like, what is this? Like, seventh grade dance? What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. All right, Riley, whatever. If you're not going hmm. to the museum, we're just not interested in you. Yeah, sorry. Let's move on. Robbie, he's 31, insurance broker from Tampa, Florida. I just feel like this is old school. This reminds me of former Robbie, the one who was on JoJo season that I was deriding before. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, just throwing it out there. Totally. Robbie, air horn, air horn, air horn. We got another athlete alert. He played D1 baseball at Florida State and moved back home after graduation to work for his family's insurance brokerage. Okay, that makes sense. He now splits his time between Tampa and Los Angeles. That's a red flag. <laughs> what is he doing? Like, how is he splitting his time between the two? I, I too, dream of being bicoastal, but like between sure. Tampa and LA as an insurance broker, that's just like weird. And it's like, do you have a second life? Do you have another family that you don't want to share with people? Oh, wow. You went there. I it's don't like know. I'm sorry. A star. <laughs> that's another show I need to watch. No. It was only on for like three episodes. I wish I had gone oh. on for much longer. It was really damn. <laughs> okay. Well, also interesting. And maybe I heard this wrong and I'm just hallucinating. But Chris, during the live stream, which I've referenced 20 times, um, said that Robbie is a former D1 hoops player. So is it basketball or baseball? Oh, wow. We don't I, know. I bet Chris got it wrong in the heat of the moment. It's okay, Chris. <laughs> we, we all make mistakes. He was too focused on, uh, honestly, burning Nick Vial because he burned Nick Vial several times. He during did? Rob- yes, because he said, oh, yeah, we were. it was referred to us. Robbie was referred to us by Nick Vial. And then this, I quote, if you're taking relationship advice from Nick Vial, I guess people say those who can't do teach. Oh, my God. But he was like, I'm kidding. I love Nick Vial. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> That's really, really rough. Um, wow. Poor Nick. He should not agree to go on these shows anymore <laughs> if they're going to do that to him. I know. Oh, my God, Nick. Well, here's the other thing about Robbie before before we keep going. He hates iced tea. And I mean, hmm. like, do you even like life at that point? Who hates iced tea? <laughs> It's, I will say that I used to, well, when I was a child, it was more of like an acquired taste kind mm-hmm. of thing, but now I really do like it. And you know, I, I go for that before the soda it's like a default beverage who hates <laughs> iced tea. <laughs> and it's just, it, it's just like, tastes like a little flavored water. Like, I don't understand what, if you like water, if you can drink water, you can drink iced tea. The next man is like setting me up. I mean, it's like unfair. <laughs> It's just like, like, I don't know. I, I just, it happens in every episode. It's already happened in this one. I, I ended up talking about Tyler Cameron, but now there's mm. a new Tyler C in town. There he's is 27. He's a lawyer and he's from Morgantown, West Virginia. And I have to say he's quite cute with this very rugged jaw. Very handsome guy. Also, yeah. his, eyes, his eyes are a little uneven. I love that. I love an imperfect face. It adds some character, it which does. I appreciate. It really does. Um, they're really just playing into the Tyler C of it all, which like, <laughs> I mean. It, it's almost rude. Like, let it, this guy have a personality and a life that's, you know, different from Tyler C. It is almost rude. It's such a big standard. Like, you know, not everyone's as obsessed with Tyler as C, Kyler, Tyler Cameron as I am. I understand that. <laughs> but he did like have a moment. He had a craze. Oh. There was a Tyler. There was a Tyler time, you know. And now, he was America's sweetheart for like a good two months last year. Yeah, like that's a big deal. I mean, his Instagram following just grew it's so much. And now this new Tyler C is like just going to live in the old Tyler C's shadow. There's no way he can live up to it. It's rude. Like also maybe he should have changed his name to like Taylor or something. Or like, yeah, or maybe it's like gone by his last name. I don't know. I just Yeah, used a middle name. I don't, yeah. That's... Huge mistake. Poor Tyler C. New Tyler C. Well, we're going to have to call him New Tyler. You know, new Tyler, New Tyler. <laughs> Otherwise, I won't be able to. I mean, like there's only one Tyler C. It's Tyler Cameron. I, I don't know. They're just setting this man up to fail. He's going home on night one. I can tell. Oh, you. OK, interesting. Well, this is what Chris said on the live stream. He said that he comes in night one with a little dirt on one of the other guys and he's not afraid to stir it up. He's so out. What- Oh so he's out because Claire he is not going to be here for the drama. She's not here for that. Claire That's is here so for true. business. You That's cannot so have a, t- a new Tyler C and have him go far. <laughs> this guy's out night one. New Tyler. I feel bad. I'm not, I'm not even getting to know you. Whatever. But he'll probably be on for paradise. Don't you yeah, think? Yeah, for sure. He, he's got a real, he's got a face for paradise. That's for sure. <laughs> he does. No, he does. He's handsome. He's very handsome. <laughs> All right. We're moving on. Tyler S. I feel like Tyler S is kind of, um, 
on uh, the, the corner of Kenny just a little bit. He's <laughs> he's a 36 year old music manager from Georgetown, Texas. He's um, standing on the other corner beside Kenny going, hi. <laughs> he's like, well, I like the Backstreet Boys. Just kidding. No Backstreet Boys mentions here. Um, Tyler S. I mean, OK, fine. This is all these Tyler's. I can't I can't. Tyler S. is finally putting himself first. Red flag. After years of being on the road and managing the career of his brother, country singer Granger Smith, Tyler S. is ready to step out from behind the curtain and focus on himself. Have you heard of Granger Smith? Well, no. And I just know who he is because they released this and I don't, I think I want to say I looked earlier, like a few months ago and it, I think someone put it on like a, maybe it was reality, Steve. And so Dylan and I went, um, and we looked at all the people and we, he thought he found this Granger Smith, but it was another Granger Smith oh, no. or someone with a similar name who was doing other weird music. But, but we finally found this Granger Smith and it was just like, okay, you're another country singer who has been on the bachelor. We get it. I've, I've actually been just really diving deep on, on country music. If you listen to this week's jam session, I talked a lot about my newfound interest in a little big town. Yes. I, I just been like, I've just been going deep. I, I don't know. Today I was listening to um, some Keith Urban. It's not even like going deep. It's kind of covering the hits. I, Keith Urban is so confusing to me. I can't believe he's married to Nicole Kidman. It is wild, but I will say there's a song that he has called Kiss a Girl. It's very catchy and good. He's got a lot of good songs. A lot of them. The new song with Pink, I love. Um, his hair is so confusing. He's just very oh my confusing. God. I also like, heard rumors that like, he would fly in on a helicopter to like see Nicole Kidman on the set of Big Little Lies and then leave. Like Their life is just so confusing to me. But anyway... I've never heard of Granger Smith. He's not been served to me by the YouTube algorithm. I don't know that Tyler S. really was making such a huge sacrifice when he was serving up his brother's career. So just throwing <laughs> that out there. Just throwing that out there. That's true. That's true. But, you know, he, Chris said he was very polite. So okay. Okay. You know, that's cool. But he did emphasize. He's like, this dude is country. Which yeah. I, I yeah. don't know if I can handle that. I, I wonder if this bullet point is supposed to like indicate that when listening to the radio, Tyler prefers to listen to AM over FM. I mean, you can't listen to country music on AM. So like, who cares? <laughs> exactly. That's, that serves no purpose for us. Yeah. I don't know. And then he also said his personal rules that if he can't show his mama, a girl's Instagram, then he can't date her and mama's approvals, everything to Tyler. I mean, this is a Peter situation. We don't want another Barb. Barb oh was funny. Oh my God. God. But we can't have another Barb. Right. She was funny once. It, there was a moment and a time for it. And now it's over. Exactly. And the moment has passed. I, I'm not into Tyler S at all. I, the Tyler's, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't care for. A tough look for the Tyler's this year. Big time. Big time. Let's move on to Yosef, 30 medical device salesman from Daphne, Alabama. Um, He looks photoshopped. I'm very confused. <laughs> Also a father. He was married at 24 and had his daughter Zara soon after. It didn't work wow. out with Zara's mom, but they're on good co-parenting terms, which is great. That's good. His ex remarried in February, and while he's happy for her, he says it's now his turn to find love. Is this a competitive like search for love, competitive with his ex, or is this Ooh. just like a true pursuit? It might be competitive because Chris, when he was introducing this guy in the live stream, he let out a very audible sigh. He was oh, just no. like <sighs> and then he said this guy has zero filter so oh, no. clearly he lives for the drama too oh no he also apparently said about himself i'm successful intelligent have my life together and i'm extremely hardworking." it's like okay tell us <laughs> <laughs> tell us more if you do say so yourself <laughs> really weird. that is that's like you don't have your life together you're not very successful like it's it's sorry um, I think he may be Egyptian. One day, Yosef oh. wants to own a home in Egypt so he can take his family there on vacation. Maybe that's extrapolating too much. Amelia, it could be. most important fact about him, he was once catfished on a dating app. <laughs> so I think he might be on the wrong reality show. Oh my God. Oh, I know. I would love to know. Well, I would love to see pictures of this person he was catfished by. I would like to know if this was like, was it a full on catfish? Did they try to meet in person? Like what happened here? Right. Did, did he not try to do the FaceTime thing? And when then they were like, oh, actually, I can't. I'm not online. Sorry. My connection is bad. I, you know? I don't know. Did he get Neve involved? Did they do some kind of road trip that they that they filmed? I mean, I've Ooh. got a lot of questions. <laughs> I don't think this guy is lasting very long. Though. That's got to be sad. No way. Is he lasting long? That's sad. But like 
also just, I don't know. I, I question his judgment. I've got, I've just got some concerns. From all the catfish that I've seen, like on TV and stuff, I just, you, you would think that you would catch it before it, it turns into if something bad. hesitant to meet in person, if someone's like, sorry, can't talk, I can only like, like Skype with you or just like all of these things. A, a lot of the behaviors that you see on 90 Day Fiance, that's a problem. Exactly. And just, she's got some concerns. Yeah. And always do a reverse Google image search. I mean, come on. <laughs> It's, it's really 2020. True. Duh. Everyone knows about that. <laughs> Next, we got a Zach. We're, we got two Zachs this season. Zach C is a 36 year old addiction specialist from Haddonfield, New Jersey. He's all about taking advantage of every day because tomorrow is never promised. I feel like in his line of work, you're probably just very aware of like sad stories and bad things that can happen to you. And that makes sense. After putting his party days behind him and becoming sober himself, Zach C started a a recovery program focused on helping reintegrate people back into the world after rehab. That's really sweet. Honestly, like that's must be a really hard thing to do. And, um, he must be a good guy. Yeah. I mean, Chris again on the live stream said that this guy has a tremendous story and, uh, but he also said he has a bit of a Nick Vial vibe to him. (laughs) Why did he keep nagging Nick like this? I don't know. It's kind of hilarious though. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) <laughs> he loves Philly sports and dreams of sharing a Philly cheesesteak with his future wife while watching the Eagles win a Super Bowl. I feel like he watched the movie Creed and was like, I want that. <laughs> Cause that is like a, that's like a very good scene in that movie when Tessa Thompson and Michael B. Jordan have a cheesesteak and she's like teaching him about them. And he probably was like, that seems really great. They also, the Eagles, they already won a Super Bowl. I don't know if that'll be happening again. They're having a bad season. So don't get your hopes up, man. Well, you know what? That yeah, I don't. I mean, I really this guy. Uh, I like him. He's he's got a okay. lot of nice, cute facts about him. First of all, he's really um, cool, admirable career. He's a proud sneakerhead. He prefers <laughs> to keep it old school and get his news from reading the morning paper. Oh, his dream is to travel in Italy and eat his way through the country. I mean, me too. Although I've been <laughs> there, I wonder if he has. And he loves desserts, but if there's fruit on his plate, he's not eating it. I mean, that's weird. I love fruit, but like that I don't is know. weird. I like Zach. He's got some good quirks. I'm into him. Zach C. I can, I can okay. get on board. Sure. I mean, I like that he spells it with no H or K at the end. Z-A-C. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing it the Zach Efron way, which I, I love that. Is that what Zeph does as well? I never realized that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think he started it. Well, he didn't, but I would like to believe that. How do you feel about Zach Efron moving to Australia? He's just, a, just abandoned <laughs> us. He did move there. I'm like good for live your life, Zach Efron. You know, you've already given us three high school musicals. Um, and you know, I don't see you really winning an Oscar ever. I don't see you in, winning an Emmy or even a Golden Globe. So do Did what you watch you want. his Netflix show? No, but I watched like clips of it and it was it was nice. He cares about the environment. That's good. I think he seems like a nice person. Zach Efron would have been a great bachelor. Had he not, oh my God. Had he oh. not found fame from high school musical at a young age. Did you watch Summerland? I was really into that show. No, but I did watch him on Room Raiders. Oh, wow. Yes. You recently Instagram about that. Um, Summerland starred Jesse McCartney, Lori Laughlin. Oh, Jesse McCartney. Zach when, Efron. Okay. I'm sorry, but Jesse McCartney deserves more shine than he ever got. Beautiful Soul was a great song. Do you know that he wrote, he co-wrote Bleeding Love, the Leo yes. Lewis hit. Yeah. This is a total digression. Uh, also, he was on The Masked Singer and he should have won. He was the he turtle. Was? Yes, he oh. was the turtle. And honest to God, if you Google the turtle, Masked Singer, listen, to, his covers are amazing. His um, Kiss from a Rose cover. Wow. Iconic. Oh, he, talented, he killed talented it. Dude, talented guy. He's probably Great pissed. Guy. He, had, he must have had a bad manager or something. I don't know why he didn't have more success. Yeah, it's very sad. Whatever. All righty. We got one left. Zach J. 37, cleaning service owner from St. George, Utah. He's a fun, outgoing, and charismatic gentleman with a big personality and even bigger heart. I feel like when they begin with these very generic descriptions, it's not a good sign. So, <laughs> so he says he's had a major crush on Claire ever since seeing her tell off Juan Pablo during the finale of ooh. that season. And okay. while he's definitely excited for the journey to begin, he wants to make it clear that he is only here because he believes Claire is the perfect woman for him. So, like, what's he going to do when Tasha comes in? <laughs> Assuming he doesn't win. It's, it's never good to have all these high expectations about one person. Though, I too. know. It's, it's like, just don't like, put that on her. 
Exactly. And it's like they never seem to pan out to be the person you want them to be. And I, it's just I'm I'm sad for Zach J or what is it? Zach J. Yeah, Zach, Zach J. J already because he seems like a smiley, nice person. I don't know. Jay is a great last initial, though. Zach J. Zach hey. J. Zach J. OK. <laughs> I don't know. Just really ZJ. Good. Yeah. ZJ. I really like that. Zach J. Um, <laughs> he's got some really weird facts that he shared about himself, but I don't, I don't know what to make of these. First, Zach J is obsessed with gum and chapstick. I kind of love that. That reminds me of like someone I knew in college who just couldn't leave the house without chapstick in his pocket. Well, you know, then when your lips are chapped, they really hurt. Sure, it's uncomfortable. Know? Yeah, so, of course. Okay. Uh, well, you love also, that. I- what do you love about that? Uh, well, I also think I think it's a low key way of saying, hey, I'm a great kisser or oh. I have a nice mouth. Oh. You know what mm, I mean? Because yes. he's got mm. it's minty, fresh and kissable Smooth lips. lips. Yes. So I'm going to say Zach J might be the best kisser in the house. Whoa. Yeah. Big look for Zach J. <laughs> Zach J, all caps, hates jazz music. <laughs> And doesn't know how to formally dance. Those don't go together. So I'm just wondering why he had a Trojan horse's two facts into one bullet point. It's a great question. I also know. hates jazz music. I mean, come on, man. Jazz music is foundational to America. That's true. He's it never is. listened to the what's that one really famous? I'm see, I'm like showing how stupid I am. But Duke the Ellington, one- you can take the A train. Miles Davis. I mean Miles Davis. Yeah. Come on. Have you seen the movie La La Land? I mean, it's a whole movie about appropriation of jazz music. I mean, come on, dude. (laughs) Zach J once broke his nose walking into a glass door. Again, why not break up the two bullet points about jazz music and not knowing how to dance and just jettison this fact? Do I need to like, I don't know. I don't I don't know what to make of this. Who cares? Maybe he wants to say like, you know, I'm goofy. Okay, well, but it could be like, we will get photos of him. People will come out of the woodwork saying, hey, you had a different nose 10 years ago. And then we'll know that it was because he broke his nose. And so he had to change things up. Am I, guess, I reaching too much? No, no. I think that's a, maybe he uh, maybe we can't see it in this photo. And he has a weird nose like Owen Wilson. Or maybe he got a, maybe he got a rhinoplasty as a result. And he wants to, everyone to know why. Exactly. Because you kind of have to look out for that nowadays because people will literally take whatever they can, every little bit of you of before, before you were famous and share it's it online. True. You're you know? right. All right. So he's, he's being protective of himself. Lastly, doesn't understand why people have so much trouble knowing when to use their T-H-E-R Whoa. versus their T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E versus their T-H-E-I-R it drives him crazy. You know what, Zach J? Great point. <laughs> Amazing point. <laughs> I love Zach J. Zach J is your guy. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'll be honest. I'm not like super attracted to him, but I, I like all his little facts. He I, seems like a great guy. I'm all about Ivan and um, Jordan M, but... <laughs> Obviously, Ivan, because he's the one who watched Grey's Anatomy and Jordan M, because I'm just seems like a nice regular guy with a good career um, and six foot eight. However, I I just think that, you know, Zach J, maybe he's your dude. And this is what I was going to say. Excuse me. No one looks good in these pictures. They for some reason. That's true. Like the every the only one who looks good is Dale. He looks like really hot. <laughs> everyone, everyone else looks like. Pla- kind of like too shiny like they're like making him look like a Ken doll just weird photo retouching so like that I'm not gonna true. judge anyone's look so maybe you will be attracted to Zach J don't count it out Amelia oh my I'm like really excited to watch this season now I I am too this is a good group of guys <laughs> it really is they've yes. got real careers we got some weirdos pretty diverse which I obviously appreciate they're making right. an effort totally. and I'm excited now. I, this is like, I'm like legitimately excited as, as I think we've discussed, like just sort of like, was this going to be a good season? Is it weird to have the bachelorette right now? There's so much crap going on, mm-hmm. but no, I'm, I'm fired up now. I'm, I'm all need in. A, yeah, I need it back in my life. And, but I have a question. Do okay. you think because they're making such a big deal that this is Claire's cast of guys. Do you think that when the supposed switch happens, Tasha, add some guys. Yes. Be- okay. So we we might have more guys to see. 
I, I think the rumor is that some guys who were sent home will be called back. Ooh, and, what? And some that were never on the show for Claire will be called in. So yes, I think there may be some more bios added to the page Ooh. come Tasha season. I'm kind of excited for that too. I, I'm always for a, a bigger pool. I, I love when the bios are released. Honestly, it's like a holiday. <laughs> like it's like, it's just the best part of the bachelor season. It's kind it's of like great. free agency in the NBA where like the most exciting part of the NBA season is when transactions happen. It's sort of like the excitement of like, who are these new dudes? Who are we going to like? Who are we not going to like? And yes. what are we ridiculous? The, having the bios back is awesome. Thank you, ABC. We really needed this. I'm so happy to have them. Truly. <laughs> um, Amelia, thank you so much for joining me for this wonderful journey through these bios. I'll be back next Tuesday, as per usual, and can't wait to talk to you then. 